So here's some quick background. Charlemagne, aka Charles the Great, is a leader of the 12 Paladins of Charlemagne and King of France, father of Europe, who first appears in Fit Excel Link as a chain summon to counteract his more historical self, Carl the Great. The Seer version depicts his golden age as a swordsman depicted in Tales, making him the more fictional representation of Carl the Great. So if you read Trom, anything that he mentioned that you don't know was in Excel Link itself. Now in the story of Trom, he first appears under the name of Seton while imprisoned in the Vengeance Realm. At that time he was no stronger than a phantom spirit. He didn't even manifest physically at that point in time, staying in safe mode as he would refer as. He is there as a chain summon due to the paladins that appeared in the singularity, with one of them being on the side of one of the enemies. The master gets imprisoned and locked up where Charlemagne is, and at some time when they escape, so does he. He will then later appear in the Righteous Realm, hiding his identity, and when he came to talk to the master, when they were preparing for the Reinstatement Realm to attack, Roland appears. But sensing Charlemagne, he decides to keep his distance, and when asked why Roland was that way, Charlemagne doesn't reveal his relation. Now the reason he didn't reveal himself up to this point was because, one, he was still in a weakened state at the moment, and second, the reinstatement realm already had a Charles the Great stand-in, which was actually Don Quixote, so he probably didn't feel the need to step in, nor would he want to take that position. It's when in Constantinos attacked the Righteous Realm, and seeing Don Quixote, even though he was outmatched, fight Constantinos, which Charlemagne thought was awesome, he then decides to enter the battlefield, acknowledging Don Quixote as someone worthy of holding the name of Charles the Great in the situation, trying to tell him to retreat, but Don Quixote, not sure if Charlemagne was who he truly said he was, or an ally, asked him to prove himself using his noble fan against Constantinos to prove his identity, breaking through Constantinos' defensive noble phantasm. With the battle seemingly over for now, the reinstatement realm now retreating because Pope Johanna tells Constantine that they should retreat, even though he originally didn't want to, we see Bramante, who feels guilty about fighting against her fellow paladins and now her king. But Charlemagne's a cool guy and tells her to follow her heart because she's at her best when she does. After the battle, it's revealed that this Charlemagne is here on behalf of his Emperor self talking about some stuff that's right to excel a link that he doesn't go too deep into because it's not really important right now and that right now given power from his other self he has about two days at this point to stay manifested and help Chaldea. Now knowing this on top of the fact that this version of him prefers not to be a ruler and wants to stay the more adventurer type decides not to take the throne and leave that in command of the master of Chaldea we notice the agreement from anyone besides maybe Shu Fu, who eventually gave in, because really, she didn't care that much either. She just thought he would be a good fit for the position. While this is happening, the reinstatement realm is attacked and conquered by the vengeance realm, this leaving Johanna and Bradamante with a few reigning soldiers to go to the righteous realm. Bradamante barging in, scaring the guard on watch, immediately demanded that they fight which both the paladins of the Righteous Realm and Charlemagne expect to happen knowing that she is the muscle head of the group. And Charlie says that what she did was cool and would actually be cooler if it wasn't directed at them. Bramante is about to comment about why Charlemagne isn't on the throne, but he gives her a simple shush and she knows not to question it because there's probably a good reason for it. That's just how the paladins roll. So they've all decided to fight, Charlemagne gives all the paladins the command to do their best, even Bradamante, regardless of her being on the opposite side, because he could care less if she's an enemy or not. With the fight over and the reinstatement realm remnants having lost, the two sides now join as a coalition. That following night, we see Charlemagne and Johanna having a conversation. Johanna having resentment towards proper human history 
for fabricating her existence and later denouncing her. And while Charlemagne doesn't blame her for feeling the way that she does, he offers his own perspective concerning he's also essentially a fabrication based on the adventures of his emperor self. And the reason he and Johanna are here is because proper human history remembered them and left records for them to even become and be classified as heroic spirits. At this time, the master was watching this conversation so that he could understand Johanna a bit better moving forward. With the revenge realm closing in, the remnants of both the righteous and reinstatement realms charge towards the heart of the revenge realm. For the most part, the march there is uneventful in terms of what Charlemagne does. When they finally reach the gate that is haunting their progress, Roland decides to use Darendal and performs a miracle. This miracle to open the gate costs him his existence in the singularity. So nobody remembers he was even here, even Charlemagne. As they see the gate open, not knowing why it did, but moving forward anyway. When the main group gets to the hall where the door to Krimhild's throne room is, Charlemagne decides to stay outside with Kiyohime to stop anybody from interfering by getting in. Not necessarily fighting side by side, but they have the same goal in mind. After the defeat of Krimhild, they finally encounter the mastermind behind the singularity, that of young Moriarty. On the way here, Charlemagne actually stayed in spirit form because his energy reserves are getting lower and he consumed a lot of energy. After the defeat of Sherlock, with Charlemagne by our side, victory finally achieved, Charlemagne starts to fade. The sign he up his energy to more Moriarty, who is in a similar position to him, but still has a little bit more time, so that Moriarty can guide them to a very important place. And if you want to know more about that place and what's in it, check out the video on the screen or in the card.